I am Sam September, a track athlete, and me and my buddy, sports psychologist Tim Harkness, have got a call to come and watch Adrian Hansen training. He's played top 10 level in the world and has come back from a career-threatening car crash to go undefeated in 2005. Tim says that mentally, he's one of the best athletes he's ever met. Tim and I work as a team. It's my job to ask the questions. Tim's busy analyzing. Later, we send him on to court to try and explain to you what's going on inside the head of an athlete while he plays a match. What are the psychological requirements of the game of squash? Before you go on court, every time that you've got a big match, there's a part of you which thinks, this is going to hurt. And there is a switch which has to go down or, or some type of um, mental process which you have to go through to be able to put that to one side and then focus on your game plan. Because when it gets tough, I mean, from my point of view, I'm someone who doesn't win matches by blowing my opponent away. I have to grind them down. So any of the big matches which I've won, they were definitely a case of I had to make it really tough and really painful before I actually got on top of the other guy. So compared to the other sports, I feel maybe we, we have to be prepared to hurt just a little bit more. I know, say, with golf or tennis, there's, it's a lot more technical. Um, it's a lot, there's a lot more focus involved for a longer period of time. With us, it's, I think it's just more intense. How are you best suited for the game of squash from a psychological perspective? When it starts getting to the point of a match where we've both been on court for say an hour and a half, we're both hurting, maybe we're both starting to cramp, I can see that they're thinking, well, he wants it more, he's prepared to hurt more, and uh, I'm going to have to do something a little bit extra special if I want to beat Adrian. And as long as I feel that um, I'm winning the, the, the match, I don't mind losing a, a few of the battles because it's, you, you can't win a squash match by just going on and blowing your opponent away with winners. So if I'm working around the court and I'm hurting him, it's not that important whether I'm, I'm winning too many rallies because I know that at some stage he's going to reach the edge of the cliff and, and drop off. What do you focus on during a game? As I get closer and closer to say the big tournament and when it starts I'm going through the early rounds and hopefully getting through to the final then I've, I've probably come a lot more introverted and, and definitely go into a bit of a shell and try and focus on on the areas where I'm good um, and obviously not think about the areas where, where I'm maybe weaker and I'm concentrating on thinking how I can get the game into those areas where I can do it. And as soon as I feel that there's an area, and this is, it's, it's a sense, then I want to go there. I want to make him go there as much as I can. I want him to know that I know that he's not comfortable there. And the minute you start being able to do that, that's when you've got an edge. Tell us about the moment of knowing when you have somebody beaten in a match. Well, that's hard. Um, it, could be, it, it could be anything. I mean, certain... I remember I was playing a match um, earlier this year on an all-glass court in a shopping centre and I was getting hammered, absolutely hammered. And I remember I was 6-2 down and it looked like a very ordinary other rally, but he played a backhand drop from the back of the service box. He was probably two feet out of position and I looked at that and I thought to myself, he wanted to end the rally early because he's finally seen that I'm digging myself into this match and he's going to have to do a little bit more than what he has been doing to win. And at that moment, even though I had three points on the board and uh, he had a game and a half in his back pocket, I knew I was going to win that match. Um, a lot of other opponents, you can see maybe their head goes down or their shoulders sag or they tear an Achilles. But <laughs> then, uh, yeah, like I say, different for everyone. But uh, it's, you sense it. You sense when you beat. Tell us a bit about winning the SA Open this year and how that felt. For me, that was great. Um, last year, I was in a couple of car accidents and I was told I'd never play again. And um, I went to Switzerland for eight months to do all my rehab. And the whole time, I had to, I had to re tear a whole lot of muscles. I had to basically re strengthen my whole core. And there was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And I was wondering all the way, is this worth it? Am I ever going to play top squash again? Am I doing this for nothing? What if I'm wasting my time? Yeah. And 
that very moment when I had a backhand drop into the front left corner and I put my hands in the air, I knew right then and there that yes, it was all worth it. I'd worked so hard to get myself into condition where I could play top international squash again. And that one result justified it all. And before the tournament, I said, you know, I was just happy to be in the final, um, irrespective of it, but uh, that was a lie. That, that result justified everything that I'd done on the road to getting back to where, where I am now. How do you motivate yourself? I think it boils down to a self-pride issue. Um, and I know that I can't walk off the court, especially if I've lost. Um, without having given everything I've got. And that amazes me, that somebody can go on the court, play a match, walk off, having been beaten 3-1 or 3-love or 3-2, even worse if it's 3-2 and they're not tired, and walk off and look at themselves in the mirror and say to themselves, well, you tried your hardest, because they haven't. When I'm on court and maybe it's not going my way or I'm maybe going through a patch where things aren't really happening for me, all I have to do is think about all the hard work and effort and slog that I put in to get where I am. And if I don't make that count, then that means that was all for nothing. And I don't see that as being all for nothing. I see that as being very, very important to me. And I don't want to um, in any way cheapen or make it lesser of the effort that I've put in by putting in a, giving out a, a bad result. So I think it's pride issue, definitely for me. I don't like, or I won't go on court and put in a subpar performance mentally because I just think that as a person that makes me less of a person. I see a lot of guys, they turn pro at squash and after two or three years, they see that they may be hitting a bit of a level and then they think, okay, enough, I gave it a crack. But you know what, they didn't. They didn't give it a crack because it's an intensely physical sport. It's explosive speed. It's lots of endurance. And your body's not going to peak unless you're an exceptional athlete by the age of your mid-20s. And even then, when your body starts um, accepting everything you want from it, mentally, you're only really going to figure yourself out and get tougher later on in, as you're approaching 30. So, so the guy who wants to take it to the next level and be a professional and a good professional, got to stick with it, got to work at it hard for a long time and be honest with yourself. I mean, it took, people ask me, how long did it take you to get fit? Because I'm thinking of training hard for the next three months. It took me four years to get fit. Commit to it and be honest with yourself. When you look at yourself and say, I'm training hard. If you're not training hard, lift it, go harder and back yourself. Coping with pressure, I think it probably goes down to your core values and I think everybody when they're under extreme pressure they're stripped of, of whatever pretenses they have about them and you find out what that person's really like. Um, for me, when I'm under intense pressure I don't focus on all the negative externalities around me, I just think about my game plan and what I have to do to get the result and the pressure I find I almost these days battle to play without the pressure because that's what I thrive on. Very good. Let's go play some squash. Let's go. In any human contest or conflict, there are two potential outcomes. The one outcome is a win-win. You hear a lot of talk about this nowadays. It's where both parties manage to negotiate an acceptable resolution to the situation. The other outcome is a win-lose. Squash is a win-lose scenario. One player walks away with everything, the other player walks away with nothing. Now, if you put me on a court with Adrian, the difference in skill between us is so great that he could beat me using plain skill. And before you think I'm being too modest, chances are if you got on the court with me, I'd be so much better than you that I could beat you with plain skill also. But in sport, in squash, where the skill envelopes overlap, where one player isn't dramatically more skilled than the other, like this match between Adrian and Gary, in that scenario, you can't force your opponent to lose. You have to persuade him to lose. Your opponent is just like you. He doesn't want to lose this match. He's got the same hopes and dreams of it as what you have. He may even feel that he deserves to win. 
but it's your job to create so much pain and hopelessness and frustration that his situation becomes intolerable and he begins to feel that his hopes and dreams of winning are less important to him than the immediate relief he's going to get of giving up. He doesn't have to throw his hands up into the air. He doesn't have to walk off the court. But all that's got to happen is that deep down inside him, he's got to start believing just a little bit that maybe all of this pain isn't worth it. And that's what the commentators mean when they say, now let's see who wants this the most. There's something that you have to know about pain, and that is to hurt your opponent You've got to be prepared to hurt yourself also. And in the middle of all of that pain, there are two things you have to hang on to. The one is your tactics and the other is your technique. Even though at this stage, you might feel like throwing them both out the window and praying for a miracle. There's no sport where athletes endure as high lactic acid concentrations for as long as what squash players do. Nobody hurts as much for so long. And what Adrian's trying to do is hurt Gary so badly that he starts to concentrate on his pain rather than on his game plan. When you're under pressure, it's so important that your brain is talking the right language to your body. Uh, and Adrian's maneuvering himself into a position where he's going to be playing a big winner down the forehand side. And what he's going to be concentrating on, watch him as he goes into the shot. Watch how he collects power in the core of his body and starts to release that power up his spine, into his shoulder, elbow, wrist, through his racket into the ball. And it's concentrating on that flow of power that's going to enable him to perform correctly under pressure and hit this kind of winner. For me as a sports psychologist, focus is everything. And as you watch Adrian playing this point, you'll see that because he's correctly focused, it means that he's got the correct technique. And because he's got the correct technique, he's got the skill to implement his tactical game plan. And that means that in the win-lose scenario that's been played out in this little room, Adrian's the one who's going to walk out the winner.